Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of a VGC 2020 battle series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today we're going to be continuing on with that Dual Primos team. There's a slight variation that we started playing last week on the channel. So like I said, there's a slight variation to the team that we started with last week. The team is always is down in the description below. You can check out the details and even try it out for yourselves. And if you do, please let me know how you get on with the team. But uh, this is the team. That we'll be taking on this week. We might make some changes later on in the week. And if you would like to see some specific Pokemon included before we finish up with the Dual Primals variant at the end of the week, do let me know and I will make sure to include them as we go forward. So, just to recap the team before we get into it, we've got Groudon, Kyogre, Salamence, Tapu Koko. That portion of the team hasn't changed at all. We give Coco the Electrium Z because we had that situation with that Kyogre last week where we just missed the KO with the Life Orb Thunder. So I don't really want that happening again. I feel like the Z move there makes a lot of sense. And then we've got Bronzong and Sableye as inclusion. So Sableye acting, it's got Quash, can support both Primals pretty nicely there. Uh, doesn't worry about speed control, We've got fake out support still. We've still got Intimidate from the Salamence, so we're not really missing out too much from Incineroar. We've still got the dark typing on Sableye, of course, as well, to help with things like Lunala and other dark weak Pokemon. And then Bronzong going to be our Trick Room setter of a Stack Attacker. It's got the Levitate ability. Uh, we give it Gravity. Uh, Hypnosis as well. It does conflict a little bit with the Coco's terrain, but I mean, in matches like that, we can just play. You know, and prepare around not bringing Coco if we don't need to, to make use of the gravity hypnosis. It also supports precipice blades, which has been hitting. And uh, yeah, so pretty much making Groudon a little bit more viable under those situations. I am still feeling not great. So after I pre-recorded the episodes on Tuesday last week, I I got really ill. And for the rest of last week, I was, I was really sick. Um, so I was off work. And I'm still not feeling great today, but I'm feeling a lot better than what I did. Um, but thank you so much to each and every one of you for the, the kind, goodwill, get well wishes. It's uh, really appreciated. Um, and hopefully I can battle through today. Um, so ignore the hair. It is complete bedhead. <laughs> and I'm probably looking a bit washed out. But um, getting on to, to Wednesday's episode, I'll record... Wednesdays on Tuesday so hopefully I will be feeling a lot better then and uh, I'll be back to work and things and things will start looking up but without prattling on anymore I guess we'll get into today's episode as always if you do enjoy this sort of content though please remember to drop a like on the video it does really help out the channel do subscribe because we will have lots more Pokemon content coming out for you all and uh, do leave your comments because I do love hearing from you and I have been a bit bad at keeping up with comments from last week just because I've just been in bed pretty much so that is the reason it's not because I'm ignoring you I love you all I love you all we've got our first opponent of the episode so we'll hop straight into it and they're playing a team of Kyogre requires a Celesteela, Tepacoco, Incineral and Nihiligo so really nice looking solid Rayoga core uh, you've got the support options there of Celesteela and the other Ultra Beast Nihiligo to help with some of the things that give this this core a lot of trouble Tapu Koko going to be the fast mod for the team. We have to watch out there for particularly the Ferrinium, I would say. And then you've got the, the standard all Incineroar there with its fake out Intimidate support. Uh, Trick Room looks pretty good, especially if we can get the Trick Room up with Groudon in. Um, we'll, we'll have a really easy time, I think, especially with the Gravity up. Got to watch out for the Kyogre, of course. Um, but I do feel like... Groudon, Bronzong's a mod that I would really like to bring to this match. I feel like Tapu Koko is decent in this match as well. We got to watch out for uh, the Nihiligo though. That's the the one thing. Um, but to be honest, Sableye, Bronzong isn't a bad lead to guarantee a Trick Room up. To be honest, um, we could bring Kyogre and then just Groudon in the back. I think I'm just gonna go with that. To be honest. And we'll get the gears in my head moving and we'll try and get some wins because we had a really good end to the week last week. We had those three games, three wins, and the goal this week was uh, 1,700 with the team. Um, a little bit higher would be nice. 
But we'll see how we go. We're probably jinxing ourselves by talking about ratings when it doesn't really matter. We've got to concentrate on the match in front of us. So, Tapa Coco and Cinero coming out for my opponent. Um, you'd imagine there's probably Taunt on the Coco here to shut down our Trick Room mode. Um, do we, they're trying to bait the Groudon in, I think. It makes a lot of sense to do that. Um, now... Where do we fake out? I mean, we could just fake out the Coco and bring in and bring in Grad on. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. We'll get Grad on onto the field so we can start at least doing something the next turn because we still got Quash that we can take advantage of as long as Sableye's alive and kicking, which is nice. So we can Quash that Coco the next turn if it does decide to stay on the field. I don't know if it will. Um, but I'd imagine we'll just trade fake outs here um, for my opponent to get around our fake out. So fake out into Coco, break a potential sash. It's probably likely going to be um, Z move though. Uh, do they? Do they? Do they switch the Coco out? I don't know. I'm going to go for the precipice quash though, and we'll see what my opponent goes for. We got the sash on save life, so we don't need to worry too much. And uh, a precipice blade's unintimidated should be enough to take down. Now we're going to see the incineral go out for Kyogra. It's going to hit the field. It's going to get its rain up, which is fine. Um, role play would also be a nice option on something like save life, I feel. Um, but I think the other moves are more warranted, to be honest. Hopefully this Coco thinks it's... Uh, yeah, there we go. There's a quash. Cheeky old Sableye. Stopping that Coco from moving. And the Precipice Blades. And true to form, Groudon making contact. Bye bye, Coco. Nice damage onto that Kyogre. Sableye doing some nice work here. I do think Sableye is like a really good addition to the dual primal team. That's kind of why I put it in. Just for the quash alone. Uh, but it's got the priority taunt. It's nice for shutting opposing threats down. And um, yeah, just generally being a pretty decent Pokemon. Uh, what's the Rayquaza gonna do? Because potentially we could we could quash the Kyogre and go for a Precipice Blades again um, and get rid of it. But we could also, uh, well, because Sableye is not gonna outspeed the Kyogre. That's the only issue here. Yeah, we could quash, because I'm not really worried about the ray. The ray, what's the ray going to do here? I'm going to go for the quash and the precipice again. The Kyogre could protect, but I don't know. Let's see. The ray is going to mega evolve. And no Incineroar coming in. So hopefully we see the Kyogre not protect. That'd be nice. We'll see does protect yeah so the ray is going to try and get damage onto our save probably save lie but we are sashed so um we will be able to take the dragon ascent at least and then the next turn we'll be in a decent position and this requires us getting weaker and weaker by by the minute um okay i might be worth getting Groudon on out of here to be honest uh the precipice blades Going into that protect here. Um, I'm kind of tempted. Because I feel like the, the, the Kyogre switches out to Incineroar now. Um, I'm tempted to try and go for a far play into the Ray. And switch into um, Kyogre here. Because I don't think, yeah, the Kyogre switches. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then if the Ray... It'd be nice to see the Ray go for the chase the Groudon down now. Because if we can get a foul play into it, especially after two Dragon Ascents, I'd imagine we'd probably pick up the Knockout. And then our Groudon will be able to kind of clean this one up. Should be able to. So Kyogre coming onto the field. Getting rid of that Delta Stream, which is nice. Where's the Ray going to go? Earth Power, it's gone after the Groudon, yeah, so that's good. That's excellent for us, actually. Yeah. Special defense laws, but that's that's all right. Um, yeah. And the foul play. I mean, that is just incredible damage, isn't it? 
Um, so, what we could potentially do is switch into Bronzong and just protect our Kyogre here. Um, because I feel like the Ray probably goes after the Sableye again now. Uh, the Fake Out will come out onto our Kyogre, protecting that Incineroar. And then the next turn, we've got... As long as the, the Incineroar isn't um, Z-Move. Which I don't really think that it will be. It could be though. We can't discount that. Then Bronzong's got a pretty easy trick room setup going into the next turn. Ah, oh, okay. We're going to see Kyogre come out instead of the Incineroar. Makes sense. Um, where's the Ray going to go? I'd imagine it goes after the Sableye. It's got an Earth Power. That, that helps. Okay. Um, hmm. Now, do we just Ice Beam? We could, like I could just Trick Room. I'll try a Trick, I'll try a Trick Room and I'll try an Ice Beam, the Ray. We might see the Ray switch out. I doubt it though, I think the Ray will probably, the Ray's gonna go down here. And, th and this is the thing, like now if the Ray goes down, it doesn't matter if we got a Trick Room up or not. Uh, Groudon will be able to win this match as long as Ray Cries is out of the equation. And I don't think my opponents really got, unless they got Thunder on their Kyogre, a way to actually take down our Ogre. Um, Kyogre actually just going to switch out and Incineroar come in. Okay. Well, happy with that. I think it would have been better going for a Water Spout there, to be honest. Flamethrower? Huh. Okay, well, that, our lives just got made a whole lot easier. Because, yeah, that's going to be the match now. And Bronzong gets his good old trick room up. The little bell and uh, Twisted Dimensions. And we should be able to uh, close this one up pretty easily from, from here on out. Um, do we use this turn to set the gravity up? Aha. Yeah, let's do it. Like, we could get faked out. But, I mean, if they fake... Bronzong out, then they're going to take a water spout, so, I mean, either way, at this point, it doesn't really matter for us, we're not under any pressure, and my opponent's got everything to do right now uh, to get back into this game, and there we see the forfeit, too much, but very good again to my opponent, a nice one for us to kick off with today, and uh, nice to see the two new inclusions to the team uh, doing some work, and that portion of the team um, really putting in some work like I say doing doing the biz for us so very good and um, I don't think we're gonna miss the Incineroar too much to be honest we didn't really bring it that much last week um, the fake out supports really good but other than that I think Sableye offers a, a lot more so we'll get some music on sitting at a rate in 1654 which is very nice for us to kind of kick off the week with um, let's go with Aether Foundation. Let's go with that one. And, um, we'll kick into it. I'm just trying to think as well. I'm sure there was some Sword and Shield. Ah, there was! Sir Fetched! Sir Fetched was announced last week. Of course it was. Uh, I missed the ball on that one. Um, didn't even get a tweet out <laughs> about it. But here we are. Here we are today talking about Sir Fetched. It's pretty cool. It looks it looks like it's going to be a fun Pokemon. Uh, whether it'll be like super viable or not, I don't know. Uh, fighting type. I tell you, my one like hot hot take going into Sword and Shield for the, the the 2020 season when we revert in January is that psychic types are going to be really good. Like I feel like Espion at the minute is one of the ones that we have revealed is going to be pretty pretty decent going into the new season. Um, God of War, if it got its Mega Evolution, would be incredible, but we don't have Megas anymore, do we? Anyway, we need to get into Team Preview, because we've got Roy up next as our next opponent. So Roy is also bringing a Rayogre team. We've got a bit of a variation here. We've got uh, alongside that Rayquaza and Kyogre, Incineroar and Landorus, the double Intimidate there, one of them offering uh, fake out support and the other often a ground immunity which does help this team out especially with the Rayquaza that can help bolster the fences of that Landorus with its Delta Stream then we got Tapu Fini and the Whimsicott. Whimsicott going to be the uh, predominant speed control setter on this team um, again do we have to really worry about going Sableye Bronzong as a lead here uh, 
and do we want to bring anything else maybe to the party like I'm kind of tempted with Tapu Koko here just for the fact that Koko can do some well it can pick up knockouts on Kyogre and Finny and do some good damage to the Ray as well uh, we could just go Sableye Kyogre Koko and Groudon let's try that let's try that with no speed control just quash support which is kind of speed control I guess it's like soft speed control who am I kidding who am I kidding um yeah but uh, so fetched looks really good I think psychic types just because you, when you look at the new Pokemon that are kind of popping up everywhere you've got the, the new wheezing um, fairy and poison typing um, that I just feel is going to be on pretty much every team because of its ability. Um, and then you look at like things like Surfetch, which could potentially be very good. Again, I think uh, probably going to be uh, used. So that makes Psychic Types even better. Psychic Types just generally quite good. So I think, yeah, like we might get some other Psychic Types and there might be a lot of other changes to the format. But I do think like it's something to think about anyway I'm not saying it's a dead cert but uh, it's good to start thinking about these things now leading up to the games being revealed and like I say like a lot can change between now and then we get lots of different new Pokemon and um, so yeah it could be completely different now what do we do what are we gonna see Tapu Fini go for here um, an icy wind potentially um, I don't really want to bring Groudon in just yet. I've got to fake out. Fake out the Kyogre. I kind of want to fake out the Kyogre. I want to bring Coco onto the field. And you know what? Even if we take an icy wind, it's not the worst thing in the world because we've got that quash. But I don't want to stop putting some pressure on these Pokemon. Um, and we'll overwrite their terrain as well, which is, I guess, a thing. Kyogre just protecting, so we could have went for the fake out into the finny, but it's not really worth risking taking a water spout for, to be honest. So an icy wind, probably. Ooh, just a nature's madness. Much prefer that. Much prefer it. Honestly. Um, now, here is the thing. Where do we... Where do we... Where do we target? Do we go for the Kyogre? Kind of tempted to go for the Kyogre, but the Kyogre probably wants to switch out. The Finny's likely to switch out as well because of the terrain. Um, we could get this totally wrong. That's my little gripe here. Uh, and I don't really want to lose Sableye. Uh, I'll foul play into the Finny, and I'll go for the Gigavolt into Coco. No. Yeah, I'll go for the into the Kyogre. Let's see. No, it's gonna be Landorus. It's gonna be Landorus, isn't it? Ah, every time, every time. <laughs> uh, should always go into that Pokemon that doesn't protect. But you know, that's one of the reasons why I think maybe we go for it into the Kyogre here because it's so obvious that the Kyogre is just protected. It feels threatened. Maybe my opponent feels like they could they could punish us for us not attacking into that and um, no, and the foul player coming out into the finny doing nothing and the icy wind coming out as well. <coughs> not ideal. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think we'll still go for a qu we'll go for a quash into the landorus. We'll try and get. A Volt Switch off into the Finny here and just get some damage off onto it. We know the Landorus is out now, so um, we'll probably have to get Kyogre back onto the field. But we want to preserve Koko for later in this match. We've wasted our Z move, which is a little bit frustrating, but we can't dwell on that. We've just got to try and move on. Volt Switch there. The frustrating thing is, we could have just targeted the Finny then, got rid of it and that would have made our lives so much easier. We'll probably take an Earthquake now, I'd imagine. Or maybe not, maybe a Z-move comes out uh, from Landorus. Um, but we'll get the rain back up. Just another Icy Wind. I can't imagine what to see an Earthquake. 
Like it wouldn't really make much sense because you're damaging your own finny. But maybe you don't really care about it that much. Now it is a Z move. Okay, where are we going? Into save lie. I prefer into save lie to be honest. Because then we can get Coco back in. We can Volt switch out on the finny, get rid of that, and just ice beam the Landorus. Yeah. As much as I hate to see save lie going down. I prefer it to Kyogre taking a massive bunch of damage. <coughs> because I don't think you've got a really safe switch in now um, for a Volt Switch on that Finny slot. Um, and although we'll probably see an Earthquake come out from the Landorus, which we potentially could do. So the one thing that we could think about doing now is um, protecting Coco and just Ice Beaming. The Landorus, because we could potentially see Rayquaza come onto the field. Um, but then the Landorus could protect as well. So we're probably better off just getting rid of the Finny if we can. Get some damage onto the Ray when it comes in and Ice Beam in the Landorus. Although we could have doubled up into that Finny slot with an Ice Beam. We're not going to see it. Groudon's going to take a bunch of damage coming in. Uh, which isn't ideal. Especially if an earthquake comes out, which I'd imagine it will. And Groudon coming out onto the field. Not overwrite our rain, but we'll get that back soon with Kyogre coming back onto the field. Oh, that Gigavolt attack target was just the wrong way around. Just a bit annoyed about that. There's the Earthquake. Let's see. I'm not intimidated. I'm oh, taking lots of damage there. Uh, and the Ice Beam, which will be enough. Okay, so we're probably left with Rayquaza and Kyogre now. The problem is... Kalko's probably in extreme speed range. So getting Coco in is not going to be an easy task. Yeah, and what we really need to do is um, try and bait the Rayquaza into Mega Evolving, which double protecting this turn might be the best thing to do, um, or at least protecting Groudon. No, I think yeah, I think double protect here is probably the best play because. An ice beam is not going to get the Rayquaza in Delta, like the Delta stream, but it will get it if we can. If we can take Dragon Ascent, we're going to have to sacrifice Coco. That's the only problem. Dragon Ascent, yeah, and Origin Pulse. Okay, can our Kyogre take that combination? <sighs> Unintimidated, I'm not so sure. But we'll, 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 we'll have to try this. I don't think we've really got too many other options. So it's not Mega Evolving as well, which is the other thing um, that's a little bit worrying. Because it's probably going to Mega Evolve now. Um, but I mean, that's still fine, isn't it? So we'll, we'll go for the Ice Beam. I just don't think we can close this one out now. Uh, it needed to Mega Evolve that last turn. And it's still all about whether or not we can take um oh, it's still not mega evolving. Okay. So we'll take this. Are we faster? No. Ah, nah, now nah, we can't do it now. We can't do it. Yeah, we needed to be faster, and if not, we needed that to miss. So I think, like, we're getting like seriously punished for that 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 gigavolt. You can see how pivotal that like that target was for us. Um, just getting rid of the finny there would have made our lives so much easier. Um, but never mind. We'll get the the, the desolate land up, and uh, yeah, we'll just see Rayquaza. It will mega evolve. Not even a dragon claw could save us now. Um, we'll, we'll press with blades, but we're definitely slower than Kyogre, and uh, there's no way that Rayquaza doesn't Mega Evolve. So my opponent played it pretty well, like they've done everything they needed to do. Um, 
and we just yeah it all down on our heads you know like that targeting of the Kyogre it's where the mind games come in you know just go for the target that you know that like the, the, the safer option there was always going to be the Finny because Finny less likely to protect less likely to carry protect and the Kyogre feeling very pressured in that situation always going to be the one that switches out and we kind of walked straight into it even though we knew that was probably going to be a situation the mind games there thinking well my opponent knows that the Kyogre's like the main target here um, so maybe we target the Finny instead to get rid of that to get a bit of a foot up in the, the battle so maybe we don't we don't target the, the Kyogre um, and that's what my opponent's thinking so we think ah oh, well, well if he thinks that and the Finny's the prime target then Kyogre's left free so maybe I can get a cheeky water spat off and that's really the road we were going down and we got punished for it and we got no complaints there so very good game to my opponent good games to both my opponents today a little bit disappointing this last one especially you can see the logic of going down but it definitely wasn't the right road to take because we could have easily closed that game up I think with this team and um, just a bit of a shame that we didn't do it uh, in the right way so we'll wrap things up there guys uh, i hope you've enjoyed today's episode uh, leave your comments down below as always and we'll be back with more dual primal action tomorrow so until then take care and bye bye